Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Dan, the voice behind that Kaito Dan, and I'm here to break down some cool new information for Ruby that came out during the RT Animation panel at New York Comic Con, as well as some other new details that came out through the last couple of days. Though before we start, even though some information from the previews that were shown off exclusively at the event has been discussed among some of the fans, and some information has been spreading around, I won't be mentioning anything from those previews, in case you want to go completely blind into the first episode. Also, I will be discussing spoilery content from the previous episodes in the show, so please watch with caution. With that said and done, let's quickly glance over a few things that actually came out first through an interview segment at the convention with Barbara, Kerry, Gray, Miles, and Lindsay. One of the more exciting tidbits mentioned was that Volume 6 may be showing some repercussions from Adam's actions in recent volumes, hinting at some tense situations to come for the White Fang and for the rebellious High Leader, which I fully expected. The guy has made some, let's just say, extremely volatile and conflictive actions in the past that surely many within the group don't agree with. And with the Belladonnas about to make their own brotherhood to counter the more destructive Faunus faction, I wouldn't be shocked if several members decide to jump ship if they can, which of course will be great news for this new group, and it may force Adam into an even darker descent, which I'm sure means that we'll have more chaotic moments to come. There was also a lot of discussion on the writing process for this upcoming volume. Previously, we heard that Miles and Kerry have had additional support from other writers within the company to make sure that the writing is the best that it can be. And adding to that, the two have actually started writing for Volume 6 since a week after the finale of Volume 5, which has allowed them to have more time to reflect on things and see where they can improve. Volume 6 will also have a bigger focus on moving things forward and returning to a journey approach that was seen last in Volume 4 that had new locations, new characters, and new monsters, and less of the being stuck in one location for a period of time that we saw in Volume 5, which did mask some of the pacing and urgency. Lindsay and Barbara also had some teasing quotes of their own to make, like expect the unexpected, and Volume 6 will play with some new themes that have yet to be explored in the series. Make of that what you will, but for me, this all sounds incredibly promising, especially with the hints to the story offering viewers something new each episode, and the trimming down of the static nature of Volume 5, or the multiple storyline hopping found in Volume 4 being a thing as well. Moving on to some of the announcements from the convention, Season 4 of Ruby Chibi had a tiny confirmation at the interview segment, which hopefully will have the content that was teased for this previous volume if they don't pop up in any of the holiday specials that we're bound to get. Crow is also going to be the next character to get a figure, so be on the lookout for that once the Drunkle drops in the store. We also got another manga to look forward to, alongside the rest of the Ruby anthologies that's coming to the West, and Volumes 1 and 2 being adapted by Kohei Kusu. Details on this new project is scarce at the moment, but we do know that the person behind it is named Bunta Kinami, though sadly I've not found any prior work of his that I can give you some information on. However, we do know that it's going to be coming this fall for Shonen Jump. That's right, Ruby is coming to the Shonen Manga Juggernaut that is home to the likes of My Hero Academia, One Piece, Dragon Ball, and so much more. And if you think Ruby being in Shonen Jump is wild, get this. Rooster Teeth is now partnering with DC Frickin' Comics to make comics based on Rooster Teeth shows, starting off with Ruby and Genlock. My god. God, this series just keeps hitting landmark after landmark, and of course, you can expect me to lose my mind once I pick up all of these exciting new projects, and I'm sure you guys will do as well. All of that is pretty insane stuff, but focusing back on Volume 6 some more, 
the Ruby fandom is currently freaking out over the recently revealed Volume 6 poster, with a lot of folks trying to dissect its contents for hints of what's to come. And now it's my turn. First off though, I have to say that I love the poster as a whole. While I have seen some folks call it a bit busy visually, especially with the smoke in the background, I find it a great tone setter piece that hints at some more dark times to come, and Salem's presence over our heroes coming into a bigger light now that the group is aware of her existence. In fact, the poster overall has some really good symbolic touches to it, like the aforementioned Smoke trying to swarm the heroes, the reunited Team Ruby looking in the same general direction compared to the last two volumes posters that had them looking in different directions, which tied into them being split up at the time, and then we have the pair of Oscar and Ozpin bathed in the strongest part of the light that's countering Salem's darkness. This element alone could be hinting that Oscar's continued growth as Ospin's proxy in this grand conflict could become a central plot point for the upcoming season. And even then, the pair's expressions are noteworthy as well, with Ospin looking downwards almost somberly, while the farm boy is looking up with a face that screams out hope. Since we last saw the two having an argument over how to deal with Hazel before Ospin hijacked Oscar's body, could there be some tension between them following that action? Either way, the inclusion of these two and Salem is a heavy sign that as the group now heads towards Atlas, the major conflict between these two sides will now start to ramp up its role as the dominant storyline with hopefully some new insight on Salem and Ozpin. Also notable is the lack of Jean, Nora and Ren, but I doubt this means that the trio will not have any part to play in the next volume. Rather, this is just the focus being directed stronger towards the reunited Ruby Girls, as this is their first poster as a reunited unit. So if anyone is concerned over the future of these three in the series, or at least for this upcoming volume, I wouldn't be too worried. There's also this very intimidating looking Grimm creeping out from among the smoke in the top right corner. While some have suggested this could be the Manticore Grimm that was revealed at RTX a while back, the lack of the two large fangs that were shown in the concept art has me believing that this is a totally different Grimm unless the manticore that we saw in the concept art is actually the stronger variant and the one in the poster is actually its weaker version. Though if that's the case, why have the weaker version instead of the stronger one? Either way, having a Grimm in the poster itself makes it seem like this particular beast will have some major role to play. But now I think it's time to talk about the Goliath in the room, this mysterious shadowy figure. Right off the bat, this very much looks like Cinder, who of course we last saw being defeated by Raven in the Vault of the Spring Maiden, and then get sent flying down into the Vault's chasm, where her status was left uncertain. I among many others doubted that this was the death of Cinder, especially if you follow by the common rule of no body, no death, but it was certainly left ambiguous. This mystery person though looks way too much like Cinder to really be anyone else. Though I have heard some fans suggest that it could be a grimified Summer Rose or a new character entirely. Again though, I can't see it being anyone else but Cinder. She has the same shapely figure, the similar short hairstyle, there's the grimified arm of course that she was revealed to have post the events of the Beacon Tower fight, and on top of all of this, Cinder's story still feels incomplete so it makes sense to have her return. The question then is, how is she back? Well, this is where I start to go into the speculation side of things. Even though I do think it is Cinder, I wouldn't be shocked though if it's not the real thing. Hear me out on this. She looks so much like Cinder that it's hard to it being anyone else. But then I ask, why is she shrouded in darkness like it's trying to mask her identity? Salem is also kept in darkness in her bit, but you still see enough of her features and details to know that it's her and what she's looking like, and it's not completely covering her in head to toe of shadow. 
so it's not like it's meant to be a symbolic theme overall for the villains keeping them in the shadows. That makes me feel then that even though this person looks like Cinder, something about her isn't legit. And once we see her in full detail in the volume, something about her look will throw us off and call into question the validity of this being the true Cinder. Unless it's something like some scars, which uh, to be fair would be kind of a fair guess to make. Maybe though this is a Cinder looking Grimm, made by Salem to take her place, with a true monster to hunt down the heroes. Or perhaps this could be a hallucination, a phantom Cinder that's conjured up by Emerald, who's emotionally unstable after the supposed death of the one person who kept her going in life, and Salem is using that pain to convince her to get vengeance. It honestly could be anything really, and who knows, maybe it is the real Cinder. This is again just some speculation on my part, but it definitely did light a fire under the fandom. And everything from these last few days I'm sure will continue to do so as we get closer and closer to the volume's premiere later this month. And that's pretty much everything I feel like discussing. A lot of exciting new collaborations, some promising signs for the upcoming volume, and beyond that, a ton of intriguing elements to speculate about. But these are just my thoughts, let me know what's on your mind. Do you think it's really Cinder in the poster? What's your take on the collaborations with Shonen Jump and DC Comics? And how excited are you for Volume 6? Let me know in the comments down below, and while you're at it, please hit the subscribe and bell buttons to make sure you get every video from me as they drop, and follow me on Twitter for more on anything Ruby related, as well as updates on future content and more. But until next time, have a good day or good night, and peace out.